The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Hey, Kara Ustros here with realagriculture.com. I am here today with Chris Garnett, who is with the University of Alberta. How's it going today? Oh yeah, good. Staying, staying dry now. Yeah, absolutely. So we're here today to talk about some of your research you have done um, with wheat. Do you want to tell us a bit about it? Yeah, sure. So uh, first off, I'd like to thank our, our funding uh, through RDAR, through Alberta Wheat Commission and the Sask Wheat Commission as an association with uh, Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada and the University of Alberta. Uh, so some of the research we're looking at is uh, if we can incorporate a fungal inoculant with cereal crops, specifically in wheat. So the idea behind our research is looking at a already pre-existing commercial inoculant uh, that uses arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi and then applies it to the soil with the cedar. Uh, and what we're looking at here is can this inoculant, through its ability to help plant roots sequester more nutrients within the soil and then trade it with a plant, uh, lead to more improvements and increases in not only crop yield but crop protein. Um, so what we're finding thus far is under the different um, varieties and different uh, applications of inoculant that we're seeing there is actually a difference when using this inoculant in terms of the type of crop variety so whether it's a CWRS or a CPS wheat as well as the different nutrient background concentrations which seems to play a very major role in how this inoculant works with these wheat crops. Uh, now it's important to say that this inoculant is not usually used with cereal crops they're more uh, found with pulse crops with rhizobium that, that have both a rhizobium and a muscular mycorrhizal fungi component so the unique portion of what we're looking at is taking just the arbuscular mycorrhizal fungal component of that and then applying it to a cereal crop which has more or less of a moderate association with mycorrhizae and looking at in which kind of environmental conditions can we actually see this inoculant cause any change in crop productivity and if it can what do we have to do to help it along. Now are you just working with mycorrhizae or have you looked at uh, other ones? Yeah, specifically we're just looking at mycorrhizal fungi and the specific species we're looking at is one specific species. It's, it's quite commonly studied, it's known as Glomus interradices and uh, it, it's, it's relatively uh, viable to culture and there is a commercial, uh, commercially available inoculant um, available to producers and that's why we're looking at this specific one. So you've looked a bit about how this impacts nitrogen uptake as well, do you want to talk about some of the things you've found there? Yeah, for sure. So. The research has shown in the past and in different crops in different parts of the world that use of arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi as an inoculant and both in its indigenous um, concentration within the soil uh, that really they, they benefit wheat and barley spe uh, specifically under more adequate or reduced nutrient concentrations in the soil. So what we're aiming to look at is um, under a reduced fertilization application can this inoculant actually help improve crop productivity uh, and nitrogen uptake? And what we're finding is that under lower nitrogen applications where the background nitrogen concentration may be uh, you know, 20 or 40 kilograms of N per hectare, uh, then coupled with a, a small amount of urea fertilizer, is actually improving uh, nitrogen uptake, whether it's soil nitrogen uptake, and then leading into increases in both straw and seed nitrogen concentration. And what are you seeing with when it comes to biomass? What are some of the results there? Yeah, so it's interesting that uh, kind of in line with the previous research that has been going on, um, under a more nutrient deficient or just adequate situation, we are seeing with this inoculant slight improvements in crop biomass production and therefore leading to slight improvements in crop yield or productivity as a whole. But then under more of nominal conditions which producers may find themselves in with a, a decent background nutrient concentration and a high application of synthetic fertilizer, we're really seeing uh, either no impacts to crop yield or a bit of a drag or a saprophytic effect on this crop yield and crop productivity as a whole. And what are some of the other things of note? You guys are looking at some small plot trials here too. What are you finding there? Yeah, so at our small plot trials we have uh, three different site locations and three different site years. Uh, we're also looking at the potential for mycorrhizae to uh, really help a plant defend against itself from pathogenic attack. Um, there's been previous research that has looked at um, different wheat varieties that 
uh, may be more susceptible to pathogenic attack versus varieties that are less susceptible. And what they have found, and kind of in line with what our hypotheses are, is that the wheat varieties that are more susceptible to pathogenic invasion are also more susceptible to mycorrhizae colonization and therefore more susceptible to uh, symbiosis. And with that symbiosis can come an improvement and an enhancement through um, an upregulation of uh, plant hormones through salicylic acid or jas jasmonic acid to actually improve a plant's defense response against pathogenic invasion. So going into the future, is there anything you're looking at when it comes to inoculants with wheat? Uh, yeah, our research is really just going to keep looking uh, under what situations, if or can this inoculant work to help improve crop productivity and um, what are those environmental conditions and factors that are impacting that. And so basically what we want to come up with is a base case for can this inoculant work in wheat crops? And if so, what are the environmental conditions or situations that warrant an application of this or use of this inoculant? Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.